Great, hi, I'm here with Jeff Bloom, who's SVP from Kone. Kone are a people movement company, $10 billion worth in sales. But Jeff, tell me a bit more about what your company does. Yeah, so we're based in Helsinki, Finland. We're a, a global organization. We operate in, in all the continents. And basically, we're in the business of improving the flow of urban life. So uh, the movement of people and delivering the best people flow experience in any and all environments, particularly in urban settings, but in other settings, uh, that's what we do. So access into and out of buildings, obviously elevators and escalators movement into and through buildings safely, reliably, comfortably is, is really what we're in business to do. And so when did you start looking at IoT and sensors as a way to do things better? I think this first started emerging, uh, certainly in our industry, maybe three years ago, four years right. ago, where uh, obviously we have always invested globally with the right partners around new technology. So if you go back to when we went to enterprise uh, systems, we went with SAP early and we went global. Same thing with salesforce.com on our, on our customer relationship management. And so we started looking at this and, and uh, we saw a true value that could be derived, right? We maintain over 1 million elevators wow. and escalators globally. And there's a tremendous amount of data, and if we could utilize that data to better serve and better deliver value to our clients, we were very interested in exploring that further. Uh, so we did. We partnered with IBM right. uh, and their Watson platform, and we're in the process of connecting uh, you know, over one million elevators and escalators that move about a billion people a day. So wow. there's a tremendous amount of people movement, but also data yeah. created by moving all those people that we're, we're capturing and, and applying to serve our customers better. And so what sort of hardware are you adding to your elevators and how are they connected to the internet as well? Yeah, so I mean, most of it on the equipment that we install, mm. we have embedded controllers and, and right. it's got our software so we can read a lot of the faults. But even on those units, we're applying sensors within the hoistway. So not only uh, electrical, but mechanical, environmental information, humidity, heat, wow, temperature, okay. uh, all of these things are measured vibration. So these things can all be indicative of uh, a unit that's running right, or if there's an anomaly in any of those sensors and any of those inputs, then our own algorithms right. combined with Watson and the learning that's occurred now over, over you know, all the terabits of data that are coming in, we're beginning to, to not only, we're moving from reactive to proactive to predictive services to be able to identify problems before, uh, before they occur, right. which is, which is uh, a very exciting development in our industry. Right, and so what have been the benefits of implementing these IoT systems? Yeah, I, I would say first and foremost is our clients getting what I call real-time insights into the performance of their assets. Our clients are real estate owners, right? They're, uh, they own buildings, they're property management companies, um, and they cannot possibly be the expert in every single one of the building systems that the buildings that they own deploy. But of course, what keeps them up at night is, are my assets in good operating condition? Are they being maintained properly? Could I deliver more value to their customers through better operating, better uptime, maximizing that? So. What this system does is our 24-7 connected services, it provides those real-time insights, complete transparency as to how their assets are performing, uh, any anomalies that have been found, uh, any, any failures that have been averted, quite frankly, due to our predictive services. Right. So right. they get those real-time assets, they know. Another big question for our customers is where do we invest from a capital expenditure standpoint? Where do we want to invest? There's aging infrastructure, right? Right. There's old buildings, there's old cities that are being used in ways that they were not originally intended to be used, right? right. Some of the, the largest landlords now in major metropolitan areas are WeWork, and they are now the landlord of space, and they're using that space in a denser way and in cutting up that space in different ways than what was originally intended. And that's putting a lot of, of tension on that existing infrastructure. And so new solutions are needed to make that flow of people more efficient, more comfortable right. and safer. So right. uh, they, they need to know where to make those investments. And with a data-driven approach, a big data-driven approach, they can get more for their capital expenditure dollars by making sure that they're investing in the upgrade of their assets the right way. Right. And presumably there's extra cost in adding the sensors to your products. Hmm. So what is the business model of the payback for your customers? They pay more for this, but they see a very clear ROI. And what Correct. is, and how is that um, yeah. coming from? So that's a, uh, you know, there's no one answer to that question, mm. right? Because we're all different and each type of building actually is 
different. So uh, the value for this is different for uh, a customer that is in a retail building versus an office building versus a residential building. Uh, an office building wants, especially if it's a class A office building, they're there to maintain the highest class tenants that they possibly can. And mm. these could be law firms and professional services firms and, and great companies that, uh, that want to office in those spaces. So they value that one way. Uh, a retail client may value it very differently. If that equipment doesn't work, it's literally costing them sales every minute that that, that equipment is down. So they have a different, uh, different sense of what that value is. So uh, there's no one right answer, but clearly uh, the value is there because customers are signing up. Right. Uh, they are paying for this service and they're doing it in a way that, that uh, uh, makes sense for them. And they've got uh, what we've seen is like 25% reduction <coughs> in terms of uh, call outs. Wow. That means, that okay. means downtime. And the most telling thing is the voice of the customer on units where these are installed on average 60% yeah. less customer complaints, less customer yeah. calls, which tip, you know, like most customers, they're not bashful to let us know if we're not doing what they need right. us to do. And, and so we've seen a great reduction there as well. Right. What's yeah. been the most challenging thing about rolling the system out? Yeah, I, I would say change leadership, right? Okay. Because you're, okay. you're in, a, in uh, an industry and it's not just the elevator or escalator or the people flow industry, but build the building industry in general. How do you continue delivering the phenomenal service? We have technicians that are, that are incredibly bright, electrically, mechanically, software, hardware, um, really brilliant technicians that are out there and their time is incredibly valuable, right? Uh, because uh, there's, there's thousands of makes and models and different types of equipment and that's an aging population. So how do we best support them to, to do the best possible job that they can and but it's a change it's a it's a very big change so i would say internally uh internal education around what these solutions mean but also customer education i think has has uh, been a challenge that now we're seeing a bit of a tipping point and, and that's starting to move along much right. faster now. Yeah. and how would a company engage with you if they have an enabling um you know technology um how, how can they approach you how, what, what's the best way or do they just approach you directly or yeah do you have they a way absolutely they you know you? absolutely so kone is a very strong track record of of innovation yeah. we've been in business for over 100 years uh and we've revolutionized our industry multiple times so right. and when you get into the construction business and 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 some really old technology we've introduced technology that has been adopted now by the vast majority of of elevators that go into new buildings our machine Roomless technology. Yeah. So we have, we invest heavily in R&D. We're always looking at new technologies and how they can apply to our industry, either in terms of a product solution, a service solution, or for to make our employees uh, more engaged and more effective and more productive. So I would say if there's any new technologies out there, if somebody's interested, Kone would be more than willing to ask. Now, depending on the solution, we would find the right person in the yeah. company for them yeah. to talk to. Great, great. And what are the next steps for Kone? What are you looking at next? Oh, this is quite the journey. This show has been, right. uh, I mean, incredibly eye-opening. You may be a better judge of that than, than I may be as to what's next, uh, what's happening with IoT and sensors and printed electronics. And, and I mean, you start, it really gets your imagination going as to what the next steps could be, the flexible and the wearable uh, sensors and technology. So I know for us, we're focused on the movement of people and any of these new technologies that, that we can understand and find ways that uh, deliver greater value to the clients that, uh, that we do business with and our partners, uh, that, that, that's what's next. And, and we're constantly looking for that. Great. Jeff, thank you very much. Thank you, Greg. Thanks. Appreciate it. Cheers. Thanks. That was perfect. Thank you very much. Okay. <laughs> Excellent.